Right, here we are again. It's about that time. I'm going to start with what I've got for you because it's a little bit to get through. And I'm also huh, going to silence my phone, which I forgot to do. So that's getting uh, in the way already. Okay, then, here we go. So as you may have been able to tell from the title, we're going to be discussing cancel culture. Um, and I'm going to post the link to the article that I'm reading from, but obviously you know me. I'm going to be chatting in the middle as well. Cancelling Christianity. We are in a war, whether you like it or not. The question is, are you engaged? The end game of cancel culture is the cancellation of Christianity. Anyone awake, but not woke, obviously, knows this is where things have always been heading. The cancel culture and identity politics and the woke brigade and political correctness are all aiming their big guns at the one last obstacle standing in their way of complete control. So to explain, the original Marxists, you may have heard of them, they fully expected the West in general and capitalism in particular to collapse under its own weight. Um, with worker revolutions just spontaneously springing up all over the place. However, things didn't quite go according to their plan. So the cultural Marxist replaced revolution with evolution. Instead of guns and bullets, the aim was to capture the institutions from within. And we see that for sure today. Instead of focusing on economics, the new goal was to focus on the culture. Capture the culture and you capture everything else, including economics and politics. And here's a quote from Joseph T. Salerno, and this is around five years ago he said this. Social justice, feminism, neo-progressivism, and post-colonialism, to name but a few, are all movements inspired by or born out of critical theory, and thus all come under the umbrella of cultural Marxism be it gender, sexual orientation, family, race, culture, or religion, every aspect of a person's identity is to be questioned. Every norm or standard in society to be challenged and ideally altered in order to benefit supposedly oppressed groups. Classical Marxism saw class conflict as occurring between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat between the haves and the have-nots. Cultural Marxism views such a conflict as existing between the oppressed and the oppressors, between those with privilege and without it. The working class has been replaced by minorities. Majority groups are typically defined as privileged and oppressive, with minority groups accordingly labelled underprivileged and oppressed. Heterosexuals are oppressive. Cisgender people are oppressive. Whites are oppressive, especially white men. Christians are oppressive. Those that do not fit into these groups are thus considered oppressed. It stands to reason, therefore, that if heterosexuals are oppressors, the solution is to encourage other forms of sexuality. If whites are oppressors, the solution is racial diversity. If cisgender people are oppressors, the solution is to encourage transgenderism. If Christians are oppressors, the solution is to propagate Islam. All the various wars that have been declared by the radical left against faith, family and freedom is ultimately about a war on Christianity itself. This is because it is the Judeo-Christian worldview that gave rise to these great goods and to destroy the foundation is to destroy the entire edifice. So all these folks, including far too many, I read here, clueless Christians who think all this leftist radicalism is simply another point of view or a different way of doing politics, they are blissfully unaware. A war has been declared on the faith, and all these flashpoints are but a means to a greater and more terrible end. 
Sure, not every activist pushing for the end of marriage or family or wanting to dismantle the free market or seeking to push the radical trans agenda and so on is necessarily aware of or involved in this bigger battle. But they are nonetheless useless, uh, sorry, useful idiots. In this case, not just for Lenin, but for Satan himself. Too many believers have no clue that we are involved in cosmic warfare, spiritual warfare, with the political, cultural and social levels all part of this bigger war. Spiritual warfare, of course, manifests itself in the battles we see taking place all around us. Not only does Satan hate God and hate God's people, but his many earthly henchmen are fully aware that one major institution stands in the way of gaining full control, and that is the Christian church. Get rid of the church and you pretty much have a free run to fully see the revolution come to pass. No wonder the assaults on the church have been so hardcore over the many years, and it's always been this way for the revolutionaries. The French Revolution was just one obvious example of all of this. The church was a major target, and an all-out war was declared against it, and I'm sorry to say that that war against the church in France is still going strong. Um, here's another quote. In September 1792, an event known as the September Massacres claimed the lives of 1,200 to 1,400 people in less than four days when revolutionary mobs stormed the Paris jails and murdered men, women and children by hacking them to pieces or bashing their skulls in. Of those killed, 233 were Catholic priests that refused the oath demanded of them in the civil constitution of the clergy, which placed the church under state control. Spurned on by rebellions in the countryside, the revolutionaries by 1793 would jettison the principles laid out in the Declaration of the Rights of Man, with the institution of a secret police that would monitor citizen activity and arrest anyone they deemed unfriendly to the revolution. Informants were stationed everywhere and people could be carted off to the guillotine for so much as addressing people in the old fashioned monsieur and madame instead of the state sanctioned citoyen or citizen. Even back in 1793, leftists were butchering common terms. Robespierre, and the Jacobins regarded the Catholic Church and Christianity in general as little more than a cloying reminder of France's monarchical and superstitious past. To fully sever from it, they launched an era of de-Christianization that included the state's confiscation of church property, the destruction of Christian icons and instituting of bizarre civic cults, including the cult of reason, and the cult of supreme being. All priests and clergymen that did not swear the oath mandated in the civil constitution were liable to execution on sight. None felt this de-Christianization quite so harshly as the peasants in the coastal region of the Vendée, who became subject to what some historians have classified as the first modern genocide with the current death toll of 170,000. So today we may not have the guillotine and other parts of the terrorist apparatus, I'd argue that we do actually, but we still have the mobs and that is for sure, largely peaceful mobs. We have the cancel culture. We have hundreds of equal opportunity and vilification laws in the West, which are aimed primarily at biblical Christians. And we of course have the white anting from within with so many seeking to undermine and nullify basic biblical teachings, be it on human sexuality or on the sanctity of life. Thus, the secular left attacks the faith from without, while so many are already destroying it from within, basically by going along with this nonsense in, like, maybe in ignorance, maybe uh, thinking that they're being tolerant. This is a war, 
It really is a fight to the death. Either the Christian church wakes up, stands up and resists, or it will only be a matter of time before the church in the West all but disappears. And if you think I'm joking, by the way, I'm going to hit you with some stats quite soon. Um, just shocking, shocking desecration of churches, murder of Christians. Uh, well, you know me. It's not that shocking if you're listening to me already. OK, it's so it'll be all but a matter of time before the church in the West disappears. Much of this depends on us. It really does. And what we will do in the days ahead. One thing is for sure, we cannot, we cannot sit this one out. Otherwise, there will be no church for, you know, our children and our children's children. And, you know, it goes on. Uh, so an American pastor, Dale Partridge, put it recently this way. Christian, if you don't stand for truth today, you will never stand for it tomorrow. The cultural heat is only getting hotter from here and time is getting short. And those who think they can remain on the sidelines are, quite frankly, deluding themselves. Many key thinkers could be cited at this point, but um, I'm going to just look at Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, who uh, was born in 1895 and died in 1979. And he often spoke on these very matters and these we're going to wrap up now with four uh, brilliant quotes, quite frankly. So this is number one. The refusal to take sides on great moral issues is in itself a decision. It is a silent acquiescence to evil. The tragedy of our time is that those who still believe in honesty lack fire and conviction, while those who believe in dishonesty are full of passionate conviction. What the world needs most is a voice that courageously speaks the truth, not when the, not when the world is right, but a voice that speaks the truth when the world is wrong. And it is a characteristic of any decaying civilization that the great masses of the people are unaware of the tragedy. Humanity in a crisis is generally insensitive to the gravity of the times in which it lives. Men do not want to believe their own times are wicked, partly because they have no standard outside of themselves by which to measure their times. You know, the godless certainly potentially is like, you know, if there is no fixed concept of justice, how shall men know when it is violated? Only those who live by faith really know what is happening in the world. The great masses without faith are unconscious of the destructive processes going on because they've lost the vision of the heights from which they have fallen. The world is rapidly being divided into two camps, the comradeship of Antichrist and the brotherhood of Christ. The lines between these two are being drawn and the brotherhood, um, excuse me, how long the battle will be we know not whether swords will have to be unsheathed. We also know not whether blood will have to be shed. We do not know whether it will be an armed conflict. We just don't know. But in a conflict between truth and darkness, this is so important. Truth cannot lose. OK, so I'm going to give you the author of that. I think that's very powerful, by the way if you couldn't tell by the way I was reading it, it's by, oh gosh. Okay, so I'll get to that in a second. I'll drop the link in the description box. I do have the guy's name. I do, I do. It's here. Anyway, uh, yes, uh, Bill Muhlenberg. And as I said, I will drop a link in the description box because I love to promise links and then forget what I promised. So I'm just going to pop back over and see if anybody's got any strong feelings about that. Does anybody disagree with the guy's assessment? I mean, apart from the physical casualties of, you know, Christians in, in Nigeria, Pakistan, China, I would say, and North Korea, like this, I mean, China has credit score, like social scoring systems. People just go missing all of a sudden. 
um, also theism is, let's say, heavily frowned upon and like just, I'll just, you know, stick my tongue in my cheek later. People are taken away to re-education camps. Um, church mothers meetings are raided literally in China. And that guy that I just quoted from the 18th century um, was speaking about people just being snatched, you know, in the French Revolution if they didn't uh, say the, the, the state-ordained words or whatever, you know, the, uh, the right speak, the right think, the Orwellian dystopian absolute nightmare. I mean, 1984 is a warning. It's not an instruction manual, but potentially we shouldn't have published it so far and wide, as it were. So the answer, of course, the first answer is prayer. The second answer is wake up. Seriously, the next time you catch yourself stumbling over your words because you're about to, I don't know, like name the colour of a person or just assume that, uh, you know, someone who like presents visibly as a man with a big beard is a man. That's absolutely fine. We've gotten along pretty brilliantly for, for thousands of years by using our eyes and our ears for the, like the, you know, the, the depth of the voice and the Adam's apple, stuff like that. Like just to see who is a dude and who's not. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't speak your mind. It's fair enough if they don't want to hear it, that's all right. But don't self-censor. Don't stop yourself saying things and then apologise when you're called out on these uh, like shaming parties. Because if it's equal opportunities, don't forget, it's equal opportunities for you also to say what you think. I was just sent an article. My dad sent me it. I think it was in America. Uh, some young kid, maybe 18, was giving a Zoom presentation didn't even say the words, but was just discussing this cancel culture. And his teacher basically butted in and said, so what are you saying? The police are heroes. Is that what you're saying? Like, she's been forced to resign, like, quite rightly. Like, who do these people think they are indoctrinating our children? Seriously. The culture is, is where you get people because countercultural stuff, you know, imagine the Machiavellian, imagine that they've got people doing their own, like they've got people to start protesting their own uh, civil liberties. It's like the Patriot Act in America is people calling for the restriction of their own freedoms. It's mobs, largely peaceful mobs, like out pointing the finger and silencing and shaming people because they say they've been silenced and shamed in the past. How does that work? Like, fine, you want a, an equal society. We are equal. We are all equally oppressed. If you want to like put it like that, we're all individual. I've gone all Monty Python. But seriously, seriously, it's twaddle. The mainstream media would have you believe, if you still watch or listen to any of that crap, that everybody thinks this stuff and that these few celebrities that you see being cancelled and like booed off and deplatformed, they're in a like a huge minority. But to be fair, the, the vast majority of Hollywood wouldn't look out of place in a satanic temple. So why do you want to go along with these people? Like, why are being, you know, the only herd you need to be in is uh, the sheep that know his voice. <laughs> like, just get a grip. You know, the Bible's pretty clear. God made a man. He made them male and female. And that's not a transgender reference. Just look at Deuteronomy 23.1 if you don't believe me. Anywho, this is humour, by the way. I'm just answering the comment section. I think it's laughable that Christians are arguing about Nicaea uh, when the world is going to hell in a handbasket, literally. It just reminds me of those absolutely brilliant. I'm going to print one. I'm going to get it and put it on the wall. Those uh, little screenshots of American uh, media, like last year, CNN maybe, where the guy on the camera will be saying... Um, Largely peaceful protest here, and in the background, the whole city is on fire. Like, it, that's what's occurring. It's the emperor's new clothes. Nobody is willing to shout out he's naked because you'd have to uh, cisgender him. Um, okay. Jesus is the way. I don't know how much pl more plainly I can make it. If you don't honour the son, you don't have the father. If you deny the son 
you deny the father and you have neither of them. Go to the Bible, have a look. Paul is like a Don, basically. He's just, he's next level gangster, if that makes sense. Like, if you read his writings, the man's sitting in jail. He's had all of his bones broken, riots are spontaneous, not largely peaceful ones, largely violent, violence is breaking out wherever he goes because, check this out, because he's telling the truth. That's it. Telling the truth, all well said, is a revolutionary act. And it was when Jesus was uh, here the first time, and it will be by the time he comes again on clouds of glory. So, like, I'm not really actually lecturing you lot, but, like, just bear it in mind. It's very, you know, as a religion that we have, we don't seek to subjugate people. And therefore, we may feel overly willing to like subjugate our own opinions and our own speech and our own, um, you know, moral standards. It's a slippery slope. Once you allow, you know, once you start accepting that a different God, just because they're called God in English is God rather than Satan, quite frankly. Like once you accept these lies, once you accept that there's, oh, I could get onto it with some of the church hierarchy. But once you accept that the Quran is even remotely related to our God, the Jesus I love, the Jesus you love, like it's half lost already. Because if you read that, read the text, like if you have to, but don't read the Bible first. Once you've got a firm footing in the truth, then have at it. Like seriously, have at it. It's, it's not difficult to uh, polemicize. <sighs> and the father of lies, as Villainous is just uh, reminding me, is Satan. Oh, hold on a minute, though. The greatest deceiver, or well, maybe he's deceiving him, us when he calls himself Allah, because he's already been given two names. I mean, you know, how greedy do you want to be here? <sighs> I say it, it like with love. Don't let yourself be uh, socially shamed into keeping your opinions to yourself. If the, you know, if the spirit's on you and you're called to speak up, speak up. Because if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And you will fall for the lie, the complete and utter mind games, the, the neuro-linguistic programming, the, just all of it. I mean, there's people out there, quite frankly, like all of this, oh, you, you mustn't fat shame. You know, there are people literally looking like they're one burger away from a heart attack, but you're not supposed to, like, mention it. it Even doctors are not supposed to presume gender. What are they supposed to do? Offer cervical smear tests to just every Tom, Dick and Harry, literally all male names. I don't know. Where is this ending? Where is it going? Where is it going when people are having the police come to their door because they've asked a question on Twitter who actually... Um, basically promote paedophilia anyway. Who the heck are Twitter to have any moral standing in all of this? They say that if uh, two grown Twitter users want to discuss underage attraction, which is their right speak for paedophilia, basically, then that's fine. And if they want to have any pictures and they're tastefully or artistically rendered, then meh, have at it. No, don't do that. Don't do that. And don't. Wow. I don't know, man. Try not to support organisations that do not denounce paedophilia. Can you imagine this? Anyone who's over, I don't know, like out of their teens, can you imagine 20 odd years ago someone, <laughs> someone telling you that there would come a day when you would be the oppressor, you would be out of order for saying, no, no, paedophilia is wrong. Where did this come from? I tell you where it may have come from. Uh, you shall not forbid that which Allah has decreed permissible. Just off the top of my head. I mean, yeah, you know, could be a complete coincidence that uh, Marxism and Islam have like got a pretty similar structure over there. <sighs> anyway, just, <laughs> just went off on one because I am passionate about it. Because whilst we are all watching our P's and Q's, I'm um, at LGBTs while I'm at it. Nigerians are getting macheted and raped and dismembered and set on fire and buried alive. And North Koreans are being interred for life for professing our Jesus. And they're still not renouncing him. 
Like, and we're all over here moaning, uh, you know, whatever, whatever. Who cares? It changes by the week. Who cares? It's the same headline, same twaddle, same somebody trying to shut somebody else up. And why? Because the truth hurts. And Jesus is the truth. Who wants to be told that they're, um, you know, that, that they're not actually worthy of redemption, that they're like, well, we're all totally depraved sinners. Nobody really wants to know the truth. But once you get to know the truth, you get and you become a new creature. You get a new, no, you don't. You get the personality you are supposed to have outside of Jesus. You're not really a real personality to start with. You just sins like loosely joined together with, I don't know, lies and nonsense. Come to Jesus if I haven't scared you off, if you're not already uh, in the fold. Please, I'm not joking. Um, also, you may want to have a look at the videos that I made on uh, the cult dynamics of wokeness. It sounds so pretty, like to be woke. It makes it sound like you've realised that, you know, the scales have been removed from your eyes and you see the thing. But the thing about critical consciousness is that you learn or you're indoctrinated into seeing these problems everywhere, everywhere. So diversity is, is has to be a strength. It has to be a strength. No, not particularly. Not in psychology, not in uh, sociology. No, not really. It's not. No. If you have a common goal and a group of people who are well suited to the goal and then you diversify into people who are absolutely no good at it or couldn't care less about it or are there resentfully, that's not a strength. There's nothing about diversity that is negative until it is pushed as a dogma, until it's compulsory. You have to have one man, one woman, one one-legged short person. I don't know. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, why? Who cares, um, you know, what sex the doctor is if you're having a heart attack? Who cares? You don't want a female doctor if they've only been put there because they're female and there are loads of other male doctors who could be giving you like CPR. No, you don't. It seems pretty obvious to me. However, we shall see if I get any kickback from this. I'm going to do a, um, sorry, I'm trying to calm myself down. Let me just have a sip of water. Well, I say water, water, fizzy water. Okay, anyway, I'm going to do a premiere quite soon. Uh, so that'll be good. I'll see you again in the chat. I'm also praying about some videos on early heresies. Um, I think they're really important because if you just change the names and sort of scoot them around a bit geographically, they are still very present. And some of them are on a very, very superficial level. They, they kind of make sense until you actually read the Bible or until you read further than the verse that you've conveniently stopped at like it's a thing and heresy it just breeds heresy because once you get set into um this must be the way then you have to start doing all these gymnastics to fit in all of the other verses that will be like basically thrown at you um yeah and and god is god is unbelievably amazing and he's so very 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 patient like and i mean the epitome of patience and tolerance true tolerance and a lover of diversity truly but you see how they pervert um even these attributes that are like literally that belong to our god they've they've satan has come along and and what's the word oh culturally appropriated them or celestially appropriated them and um, just made them like kind of dirty things to talk about. Okay, so um, yeah, ran over. As I better look at the live chat now. Anybody? Uh, anybody? Okay, I hope you're all just, yeah, maybe you're arguing with each other. Okay. Right, so any questions on anything that I've spoken about today, please do feel free to drop them in the comments section. Try, if you're one of these people watching after the live chat, because everybody seems lovely. If you're one of these capital letters, sense of entitlement, throw around an insult kind of people, like, 
yeah, you're welcome, but please don't expect me to like drop what I'm doing and, um, you know, come running. Anywho, coffees are a thing, villainous. You're absolutely right. I should, ha I should just get one of those hospital drips and just uh, be constantly caffeinated. But can you imagine how much more potentially passionate seeming I would be? It's probably a mercy that I uh, don't drink it all day, every day. Okay, then. So, do the right thing. It's not about being belligerent either. It's about not accepting um, constrictions on your speech. If you are speaking in truth and in grace, then, then the other people have to just get out of the way or walk away. It's as simple as that because I'm going to end on this. It's a slippery slope. Once you can't say male and female, now the word female has been taken out of cervical uh, screening literature. Uh, you could make it up. Once they control how you speak, they control how you think. Once you can't say woman with, without fear of, um, you know, like offence, it's a short uh, skip and a jump until you can't say paedophilia is absolutely morally outrageous. You see, you see how it goes. It's like a, it's incremental. It's a slippery slope, and you know, you know, it leads downwards to a, to you know where. And it could just be hell on earth. Like who knows? We're supposed to be like trying to establish the kingdom, you know, whilst we're here. Like let's start now. Let's do it. Come on, you know you want to. Okay, All right, I really am going to stop now. Um, yeah, if you maybe think you've misunderstood what I'm saying, I'm preaching anything other than love and Jesus Christ then uh yeah get in touch come to discord the link is in the description we're always very pleased to see you that's a fib like we're always pleased to, i'm always pleased to see new people but um eventually sometimes the arguments that go on i'm just like ah. but you don't have to get involved you can do what i do and just troll so i'm joking i mean administrate all right then lots of love and i will um yeah i'll drop the link in a minute for the premier and i hope to see you all i'm looking at you sir yes and you madam i'll see you then basically so god bless bye bye